at this point in my life, it's 2010. I am six months out of college. I'm 23 and I have a three-year-old. Jaden was in Oregon visiting her birth dad. It was Thanksgiving break. And my friend Cecily called me. She wanted to go out to dinner to the press in Claremont. I was really hesitant at first because it was midweek and I just like to be at home, especially during the times when I didn't have school. But she convinced me, like, just come on. You're always so uptight. I said, yeah, you know, I don't have to get a babysitter. Why am I not going out? So we go to dinner. It's just going to be us. As we're chatting, I notice this really attractive guy. He's by the bar. And for me, I rarely thought guys were attractive. I was super picky. And at that point, I wasn't concerned with finding someone. So I told her, I was like, oh, that guy's kind of, that guy's kind of cute, right? And she turns around, basically said, oh my gosh, I know the guy he's with. Let me text them and have them come over here. And at that point, I'm thinking, no, do not have anyone come over here. I just had all these garlic truffle fries. I was thinking it was a girl night. So she's waving him over here. He got her text. He was pointing to, to the direction we were sitting in as if they were going to come sit. So I was feeling really uncomfortable and regretting the fact that I even mentioned anything to her. So they come over and he sits down really friendly and says, hey, I'm Anthony. So my parents were our high school sweethearts. My mom actually found out she was pregnant with me. It was actually the weekend of their graduation. When she had me, she was 18. So this created a rift with my dad's parents because, you know, he just got into college. He got in UCI and they wanted him to become an engineer. And so when my mom got pregnant with me, it caused tension between them because they gave him the ultimatum of, okay, you choose college or you choose her. So my dad decided to drop out of college, you know, went out to go find a job and made sure to do whatever he could to support his family. Growing up, I just always saw their hard work ethic and the sacrifices they made to make sure, you know, they can provide for their family. Fast forward to 2010, I just graduated college. I got a degree in food marketing. I didn't really know what I wanted to do with that. In college, I would casually date, but it wasn't super serious for me. I didn't bring anyone home to my parents and I thought it was just like a fun thing to do. I was totally fine being by myself and doing my own thing. One of my friends, Chris, he reached out and he was like, hey, we're all gonna go to the press. Do you wanna come? I was like, eh, because I was already in sweats working on my computer. I was like, I don't really want to. He's like, come on, we haven't seen each other in a while. All right, fine, I'll go. So we pull up to the press and we go straight to the bar and we're kind of towards the front and I'm scanning the room, you know, just cause it's fun to people watch. And I noticed this pretty girl sitting in the corner. And that's how we met the end. At this point, both of our friends have left us at the table. They're talking, catching up and Anthony and I are left alone. We are casually chatting and he asked me what I like to do for fun. Right away. I told him that I like to hang out with my three-year-old. I wasn't going to be embarrassed with Jaden. I already had that mentality going into if I ever met anyone. So for me, it wasn't something that I was trying to hide or introduce her at a later time when the time would be right to bring it up. Honestly, when she told me that she had a three-year-old, I was already a couple of drinks in. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I was like, oh, that, that's, that's cool. That's so sweet. Threw me off. But <laughs> hey, I mean, we were having a good time. We ended up talking that night for probably three hours. So it got to a point where his, he was trying to get a ride home from his friends before they drove back to Fullerton. And he went outside to call them to track them down. So I was standing outside with Cecily like, I think I should just go because this is awkward if I'm waiting for him to come back inside. What if he Desperate. doesn't? I left. I had such a good time, but I also didn't want to get my hopes up that I would see him again. So I got in the car with my friends and they were asking me, oh, how'd it go? It seemed like you were really vibing with her. And so it went well. She was really cool, down to earth, um, but she had, you know, a three-year-old daughter and they were kind of thrown back, a little surprised. And, and they're like, well, are you going to, did you get her number? I was like, nope. <laughs> The next day, Cecily and I do some detective work. Detective work. <laughs> I remember his last name was Xavier. We decided to look on Facebook and just start at the top of the alphabet and put A Xavier, B Xavier. We're just going to go down the alphabet and see. Xavier is not that common of a name, so we figured it'd be pretty easy. Sure enough, I do you A Xavier. <laughs> yeah. 
I decided what to do. I was like, should I contact him? That's a little desperate. I don't know. What do I have to lose? So he doesn't respond. Oh, I didn't write you. I just friend requested you. Didn't you poke me when poking I think I poked. <laughs> Finally, Anthony asked me for my number. We started texting. So we were kind of just texting back and forth and like getting to know each other a little bit more. But I was really upfront with him and said, if we went on a date, I couldn't be hanging out all the time. I was really limited when I could hang out and it had to be around my daughter's schedule and when I could get a babysitter. It was once a week that I felt like it was fine to leave her for a couple hours without feeling too guilty that I didn't want to be gone every night on a date. And Anthony was really respectful of that. He was completely understanding. He's like, whatever works. So that really impressed me because compared to some of the other guys I was hanging out with, they were always making me feel like I had to make excuses. And he never once made me feel like that. So he asked me on our first date and we go to a hookah bar, which didn't have any alcohol. And At the I was time I was very really thrown into hookah. Off. And... We talked that night for probably five hours. It was such a good conversation. He had shared with me that his parents went through a lot to have him and he really sympathized with me for the sacrifices I made for Jaden. So I thought that was really just something that really connected me to yeah. him. And I feel like he in some way could connect to my story and what I was going through. And it made sense why he was so understanding and respectful of me and Jaden. I also was really upfront with him that I didn't want him to meet Jaden. I didn't think that it was appropriate at the time. We had just met and we had just been getting to know each other. He was also really respectful of that. I said, if this continues on or if we become something more, then obviously I'd want you to meet her down the line. But right now it just doesn't make sense. And I don't want to be introducing her to different guys in her life and just having people pop in and out and that inconsistency for her. So he was really understanding. So things were starting to get serious and I was starting to fall for her. I just remember like getting a text from her like the beginning of the shift and you know I'd be cooking and I'd respond back and then I would like frequently ch check my phone I'm like did she text back did she text back and I'm like no no and I'm like oh, whatever and so I'm like still cooking but, but like make you wait a few hours. <laughs> after that little incident I was just like oh my god I'm totally falling for this girl oh my god that's so cute I didn't know that <laughs> yes you were obsessed with me I'm obsessed <laughs> so six months later I decided to ask her to be my girlfriend to, but we, so we were in an cute. item. We were official. I hadn't been in a relationship since Jaden's birth dad that was official. And so I was very excited because it was such a refreshing take on this is what it's like to be in a relationship and with someone that respects you and lets you do your own thing and is excited when you do well and not trying to pull you down. So you were just a refreshing view of life for me and when it came to relationships. At this point, I thought it would be a good time to introduce him to Jaden. We were having a little bit more serious conversations. He was talking about me going out to Texas to meet his family. I wanted to make it lighthearted for her so that way, if anything didn't, didn't work out with us, even though I was hoping it would go forward, that she would be well adjusted. We went to church that night and Anthony came with me, picked up Jaden from her little church group or the little kids area. Yeah. I want to introduce you to someone as my friend. His name's Anthony. He's right here. I want you to meet him. And she was so cute. She kind of like grabbed my arm. She's like, he looks like Prince Eric. It was the cutest thing ever. I don't think I was really nervous meeting her, but it was just cute because it's like finally getting to see that side of Brittany and what she's been talking about and be able to hang out and, you know, talk to Jaden and see her personality. It was very eye opening. So after meeting Jaden, I think our dates changed a little. <laughs> it wasn't adult dates. There wasn't <laughs> any more of just me and you dating. We would go to the zoo. We went to the park. It also Aquarium. freed us up to hang out more too because we didn't have to just go out at night when Jaden was in bed or when I could get a babysitter. We also would go to lunch and it was nice to just have that whole experience with someone else I was sharing it with who I was who I was starting to love at that point. <laughs> Didn't I tell you that already? We already told each other that by that time. Yeah, we did. A year and a half after we met, I realized I cannot live without them. Oh. And so I decided to propose. Yeah, I know. 
towards planning for our wedding I really didn't want to be pushing Jaden to call Anthony dad or say this is your stepdad I wasn't really outlining anything I was just letting her be a kid and experience it how she wanted I never wanted to say this is your new dad now we didn't want her to think that she had to choose between dads like we knew that she had a dad up in Oregon and you know she had a dad down here and we never really wanted her to have to be on one side or the other basically and we also didn't want to bad talk him she didn't know anything that had happened and there was no reason for me to bring up anything to her she would be able to come to her own conclusion about him one day but that was never going to come from me that was always really important to us to never talk bad about the other parent and i feel like that makes more security at home for the child because they're not in this tense situation where they feel like they can't talk about the other parent or feel anything for the other parent. We were going to the gym a lot together, all three of us, and she would always have the sign-in sheet. They would always ask her, oh, is this your mom or your dad? And she would always kind of hesitate and be like, oh, this is Anthony. Like she would look back at us, almost like she didn't know, like, is this weird now? I'm calling him Anthony still. It's finally got to a point where you get to the gym and before we even sign in, Jaden runs up to Anthony and she's like, can I call you, start calling you dad? <laughs> it was so cute. But you can tell she didn't want anyone else to hear yeah. around. <laughs> and, and he looked at me and I could tell you were about to cry. <laughs> it was so cute. It was sweet. So I think for her, it gave her a sense of belonging too, because she didn't have to constantly say, oh, this is my stepdad or... And I don't even like the, that term. Like, yeah, it's like, what does that mean? Or stepdad, like, you know, you're my daughter and I'm your dad. Like, yeah, just, just like you don't say, oh, that's my IVF kid or that's my oops. Like, I had him on an accident kid. <laughs> it's that's just, your kid. Yeah. Regardless of how they became in your family. If you care for them every day, yeah. you watch out, you love them. Like, I don't, there doesn't need to be a step in that. A year and a half after we got engaged, we got married. Jaden was the flower girl at our wedding. <laughs> She was so precious there. She was part of the sweetheart table with us. We made her so much part of the wedding. Anthony gave her a ring, a little vows. Well, vows. That was so vows. cute. So at the wedding, I really wanted to make sure that Jaden was involved. And that's how I wanted to be because that's how our whole relationship was. It was just, it was always us three. It really reflected our, the last year and a half of us being together. There are a lot of lessons that I've kind of learned. I mean, everything wasn't just so rosy and easy. It was hard for me a little bit because she's wanting the love from a dad that she's not getting from. And you're like, you're right there. And we would invite her birth dad to recitals and different events she had at school, but he would never come down for them. And he wouldn't pick her up for his Labor Day weekend. He was supposed to have her every year for that. And she was aware of that. So I think for her, the disappointment would happen when he would let her down on times that he was supposed to come and he wouldn't. And Anthony was left feeling like, well, I'm here, but you know, she's still, feeling she's still feeling insecure because someone's saying to her, you're technically not worth it. So you're like, for me, I had to learn how to deal with that personally, because it's not like a dig at me. It's just like something that she's going through and that, you know, what just as long as you're there, be there for her, love her and, you know, show her that it's going to be okay. And it's okay to feel those emotions and go yeah. through those things. She doesn't have just to be talk fine it out with you and, 24 seven. Yeah. I think the learning lesson for me too is know your worth and not settle for someone. If you had given me any type of hesitation with Jaden or making me feel bad about it, that would have been an instant red flag for me. And I already was in that mindset of it was not even worth dating someone like that. If 
fast forward to today. We have been married for almost eight years. Almost eight years. Just bought our first house. Jaden is 14. She's going to be starting high school in August, which is crazy because Anthony was at her first day of kindergarten and we were getting really sentimental about that the other day. She still visits her birth dad every other holiday and she also goes up there for a few weeks in the summer. Jaden's birth dad, he lives in Oregon with his family. He's 40. He is under the radar because he doesn't want to pay child support. He owes quite a bit in child support, but it really only cripples him because he can't get a passport, he can't get a business license, his credit's ruined. So for him trying to avoid responsibility is really only crippling him more than it's affecting us. But that's not a reason for me to keep Jaden from him. That's going to catch up to him in his own time. And you reap what you sow. I'm a full, firm believer in that. So Jaden still goes up there to see him. She has cousins up there. We don't mind her going up there. We never give her crap for wanting to go up there. We we want her to feel secure in her family and not feel like she has to hide anything. I was really inspired to do this series and people just assume that when they meet Anthony, Jaden and I'm her Anthony's, biological dad. Yeah, they're yeah. so close. To wrap up this video, we have two announcements. First one. And we won't be telling you in this video. You have to subscribe to my channel and watch it next Thursday at 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Big news. Big news. Second announcement. We picked the iPhone 12 winner. She's in the description below. See you guys next Thursday.